My name is Ken Goldberg, and I have the, the pleasure to, to be um, hosting a pan the panel uh, right now, that's going to be right now, on the future of work. And I want to just take a very brief moment to, to thank our, the, the real organizers behind this, today's event. Um, Camille Crittenden uh, and Brandy, where's Brandy? Uh, Brandy, thank you very much. For <laughs> Brandy Nanaki. Um, Really, they've done a countless amount of work with the wonderful Citrus staff over the past few months in putting this all together. So what we're going to talk about over the next hour is the issue of inclusiveness in the context of, of AI and the, the many concerns about work and the future of jobs. The, I want to dedicate this session to a particular uh, colleague and friend who we lost just over a week ago. Um, his wife is here. Um, and I, I, Hubert Dreyfus was a long-standing mentor. He was a great critic of artificial intelligence over the years and, and, and a wonderful philosopher, a beloved teacher here at Cal. And if, I think he would be delighted to be here today. So it's in his memory that we're going to do this, uh, this session. What I want to talk about is... Uh, <laughs> and we have been hearing a lot about AI. In the past few years, the, there's been it's been a huge resurgence in the in the in the in, in, in music in, sorry in movies and books and in there have been results. We have had a number of major breakthroughs in the field, like the AlphaGo results and the games, and we also have seen a huge resurgence in press coverage and things like this, where the rise of the robots, uh, discussions basically predicting that this is going to have cataclysmic effect on jobs. And there have been. There have been a number of changes in jobs. There's no doubt about that. that we're not, no one can deny that there has been uh, loss of jobs, loss in the, especially in the middle range of jobs, and a lot of income inequality and suffering, not only in the United States, but around the world. <clears throat> a lot of people are concerned, essentially it comes down to, is this going to get worse? Is this going to be catastrophic? And will, will and many of us may be wondering, am I going to lose my job too? Are the robots going to, are the robots coming? Are they about to steal our jobs? And this is causing what I believe is a great deal of automation anxiety. And this is, uh, it really is for, for, for many people, especially uh, um, workers uh, who may not be as aware of all the details, they're reading this and, and, and having a sense that this is going to be very, very disruptive to them. Now I want to point out as a researcher in this field that this is a very old story. In fact, the fears of technology, of robots, uh, of, 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 of our, our human creations taking over are very deeply rooted in Western culture. And in fact, also the fears of someone taking our job is also very deeply rooted. So it, 100 years ago, it was, the, it was the yellow peril. It was the Chinese who were going to take our job. There's a long tradition of looking for scapegoats for, uh, for economic uh, dis disruptions. I want to, I, I love this quote that um, Oliver Morton from The Economist said a, a year ago, is that robots are the new scapegoats. Robots are immigrants, but this time from the future. <laughs> and they are very convenient scapegoats, and indeed. And I want to talk about that. I do feel that there's a lot of advances. There's, there's, my own area is cloud robotics, and, and we have a lot of work going on here at Berkeley in this area. There's also major advances in networking and connectivity that's leading to this uh, industry 4.0, this fourth wave. I think that is uh, very important. But I also think it's important to temper this with reality, that the claims are overstated in many, many cases. I'm very skeptical, and I'm going to offer right now uh, 20 $100 bets of the following. That I, will, I want to argue the, bet, the proposition is that driverless cars will be rare, meaning under 5% of the cars, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in January 2027. So that's 10 years from now. You can sign up at that uh, driverless cars dash, dash bet, and we'll see what happens. But I'm going on record as saying driverless cars are not around the corner, despite what Uber and others are saying. It's a very hard problem. They've been saying fully autonomous cars, driving around, picking your kids up, and taking them to soccer practice. I don't think that's going to happen at least in 10 years. I'm not even sure it's going to happen in my lifetime. All right, but there's going to be many other jobs that are safe. These kind of jobs, when you're doing really uh, assembly and constru construction jobs, they're safe. They're not, we do not have robots about to do those. These kind of jobs in the kitchen, robots are not even close to being able to take over these jobs. Jobs are, and many times, of, of caring for, for people in many different environments, not, robots are not able to do that. 
There's a lot of talk about this idea of a singularity, that this is, is impending, this idea that we're going to suddenly robots are accelerate and take over. And I want to push back on this, and I have a concept I want to propose called multiplicity. That instead of singularity, multiplicity is a much more constructive vision of the future. And what it's based on is the idea of combinations of people and machines. And we know that if we take combinations of machines, there's a well-known theory about this, random forests, actually developed here at Berkeley, that shows mathematically that if you take a diverse group of, organ of, of machines, you actually get better performance than a single machine. And the analogous thing is true for groups of people. When you have a diverse group of people working together, you often get very, very superior results than a homogeneous group. And we might characterize this as not just AI, but intelligence amplification. In other words, trying to think of the humans, how do we in incorporate these, uh, these advances into making humans better? There's been historical examples of this. A high school movement was when automation started to move into the farms. We responded, and America responded by, by basically increasing education, changing the way we thought about education, making, making high school mandatory, and it, and it was very successful. So this is what I believe is the future, that we're going to go from an old school model of education, of uniformity, consistency, obedience, rigidity, and pre predictable um, schooling, to this new wave, where we're going to be emphasizing diversity, variety, resistance, innovative approaches, and surprising outcomes. That, I think, is a hugely, extremely hopeful. So although I think that advances are coming for artificial intelligence, they're not coming as fast as are being predicted. And I think we can be, there's reason for hope, for optimism.